It's 2024 and that means it's a great time to be working with Java, but if you want to work with Java, you first have to install Java. And that's what I want to show you in this quick Java installation tutorial. I want to show you exactly how to install Java on your Windows operating system and maybe even show you how to write a little Hello World program, compile some code, run some code. I might even show you how to install an ID like Eclipse and develop code like a real professional software developer. Now, if you want to install Java, the first thing you need to do is find a distribution. And this is overly confusing, but it's also really, really simple. The, the JDK, the Java environment is open source and a lot of different vendors will build a distribution from the open source libraries. There's one from Red Hat, there's one from Microsoft, there's one from Azul, there's one from Oracle, and there's an open source one from Adoptium. And here's a little secret. They're all basically the same. If you want to install Java on your local operating system, I say just head over to adoptium.net. You'll notice there's a big blue button on their website that says latest LTS release, just in case you didn't know. Java 21, which is the latest long-term support release, LTS release, came out in September of 2023. And that's the version most people are going to be working on for the next couple of years at least. So just head over to Adoptium, click that beautiful blue button and the Tamarin for Windows runtime will download. Tamarin is just the word runtime with the letters rearranged. That's the Java environment that you're going to install, that you're going to get from Adoptium. Just some clever wordplay right there. When you click that blue button, you end up getting a file that is, oh, how big is that file? Oh, it's pretty big. It is about 175 megs in size. Not too bad. It's an MSI. So you can just double click and an installer will come up on the website. If you dig, you'll actually find the option to download a zip file as well. So do that if you really want to, but I like the MSI. It guides you through everything you need to do and you don't have to do much. Just read the introduction, click next, There's a few drop down boxes in there. The one I want you to edit is just the option to set Java home. That's just an environment variable that describes where the JDK is installed, where the Java environment, the Java development toolkit, the Java runtime is installed. And a lot of programs that start up, maybe Minecraft when it starts up, maybe IntelliJ when it starts up, Tomcat when it starts up, it looks at that environment variable to see where Java was installed and it can help run your programs if need be. So select that. The other option that I sometimes like to change is just where Java is installed. I don't like program files. It's fine. Leave it alone. Don't touch it if you don't want to. I personally always like to just install into a folder called underscore tools slash JDK dash 21. That's just personal preference. You don't have to do it or you can install it wherever you want. I don't care. Just get Java installed on your local operating system on Windows for me. Click the next button, click install, and then just wait a second as the JDK, as the Java runtime, as Java installs on Windows. Okay, and boom, there we go, Java is installed. But I'm from Missouri, I like people to show me that these things have worked properly. So has Java been installed on my Windows operating system? I'm gonna open up a new PowerShell window and I'm gonna type in the magic words Java dash dash version and see what happens and boom, all of a sudden it says, hey, Open JDK 21 has been installed, the LTS long-term support release, it's Temerin, it's from Adoptium, it's pretty cool and Java is installed. Now, what do you do with Java after it's installed? Well, if you just want to run programs like Minecraft, when well, you just install Minecraft, Minecraft will find the Java environment and it will run. But if you want to do development with Java, if you want to learn Java, you know, the first thing you should do is just create your first hello world file. And that's pretty easy to do. If you want to just see how Java looks and how Java is structured, just go onto your file system, find a a, a nice little folder and create a new file. I'm going to create a new file called hello world. 
dot java i'm going to get rid of that dot txt extension java is case sensitive so you may not have noticed the subtlety of my voice but when i said hello world i pronounced hello world with an uppercase h and an uppercase w java is case sensitive it's very sensitive about its casing but i'm going to create that file right there hello world dot java and then i'm going to open this up and as this is opened up i am going to just type in the requisite code to create a hello world now there's actually some big shortcuts in java 21 and some of its preview features that make doing a hello world a lot easier than this but we're going to go old school you first type in public class hello world and it has to be uppercase h uppercase w to match the name of the file and there it starts that at the end of public class hello world there's a open brace that you have to match with a closed brace i always like to put those in at the beginning then the entry point of a java application is just public static void main string args which is a mouthful but it's what we've been doing for 30 years in Java. Although with some of the anonymous classes and unnamed method features of Java 21, we don't actually have to do that anymore. But let's go old school and just type in system.out.println in double quotes, hello Java world. And see if after we've done a Java installation on Windows that our little hello world class will work. I'm gonna do control S to save that i'm going to quickly look at the code system starts with an uppercase letter everything else is lowercase double quotes around the hello java world what's written inside the double quotes doesn't matter in terms of case sensitiveness ends with a semicolon matching brackets okay i am good i'm loving it so now all i have to do is compile the code when you write some java code you compile it into something called bytecode. Um, that bytecode is like an intermediary file that will run on Windows, Mac, Unix, different architectures. Um, and then you run that file. And so I'm gonna compile it and run the file. To do that, I'm gonna go back to PowerShell here. Looks like I'm gonna have to do some CD movements to get into that code directory that I created. But if I do ls from that code directory, you'll see hello world.java in there. And I want to compile that code. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to issue this Java C command. Now, you'll notice when you compile some code in Java, it creates a dot class file. So watch this. Java, hello world dot Java, case sensitive, uppercase H, uppercase W dot Java, lowercase letters, Java. It's not Java. It's Java C. So it's Java C, the Java compiler. But keep your eye on the prize over here as I do that. Watch what happens. Click enter and boom, all of a sudden we get hello world.class. Now it's that class file that gets run. I just type in Java hello world, cross my fingers, click enter and boom, hello world Java comes back to me. Hello Java world. So not only have we installed Java on Windows, but we've actually written a, a quick hello world here, proving out that Java is in fact working. And if we wanted to, we could do some crazy software development with this. Now, what do you do next? Well, the next thing you might want to do is perhaps, I don't know, install Eclipse or install an IDE. I've got Java installed. If you stick around and watch the next video in this series, that'll show you how to install Eclipse and maybe even turn on and play with some of the advanced preview features that are available with Java 21. By the way, if you did enjoy that tutorial, why don't you just subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also head over to theserverside.com. I'm the editor-in-chief over there. We've got lots of great tutorials on Java, on Eclipse, on DevOps, on Spring, on Scrum, on Agile, on the Mojo programming language as well. And if you're really interested, why don't you sign up for my newsletter? There's a, a link in the description. But if you want to go one step further in learning Java, follow along in the next tutorial in this series, which is installing Eclipse on your Windows operating system.